Okay, quick recap on what I did here. So I tried to wrap this yesterday. There's an extender on it, and that's the bottom part. I couldn't get that to wrap correctly. And overall, I'm not very happy with it. Um, here's the other color. can tell what's, which one's upshift, which one's downshift. So I decided to take this off. First thing I've, I did is go ahead and disconnect the negative of the battery. Okay, and let the car sit. I let it sit for about 20 minutes with um, press the brake pedal for about a few minutes, few seconds. Once the lights goes out, and then you know it's drained. And here's the, it's a little hard to take off because there's a hole here. You grab a light. Okay, there's a hole here. On the other side, there's the same. So what I did is I went and grabbed this two Allen range I have, perfect size. And in fact, this is actually pretty good. I can push against the 90 degree part and then push on both ends and pull right out. But I need to get a few of these guys to wedge in between. The Allen range is Jimmy. Um, there's a little, I'm not sure you can see it. There's a little hole here where the, the spring is for the airbag. Well, the Allen wrench was in it against the hole like a lock. So I couldn't pull it out. As soon as I pulled the Allen wrench out, the entire airbag just falls right out. And you can use this hex screw. There's a little wire attached to the, the pedal shift. Maybe it's called T. Torix, okay, T20. And you unscrew it and pull out the wire and you get a pedal shift up. I'm going to take out the wrap and I'm gonna epoxy it, make it smooth, and I'm going to paint it. This little pin can come out. Once the pin comes out, I can disassemble, detach the, the clipper away from the pedal. But it'll be easier if I take it out and paint the whole thing. Let me go try that next. Okay, and switch to a different camera to see if I can do this. There's a little pin here. Can reach in there. As you do that, see how this pin pops out. Okay, and then grab it, the head of this, pull the pin out. Okay, leave that there. In case I, I can put it back. All right. Aside so the rest is all solid, and then let me do this again really quick on the other side uh, just in case I forgot which side it is. All right, let's try this again. Try my Chiskinia one. right out go to right left side left and right pull this guy out perfect so I'm going to paint this I've, I'll, I'm going to epoxy this hopefully I can fill the hole I have some fillers epoxy fillers and uh, resins and I got some really cool stickers I think the USA will work very well maybe the rocket NASA this little guy Oh, I'll stick a sticker on this thing just for fun and I'll epoxy it with a clear coat. It might look really fun. I'm going to re remove so okay there we go so it's very hard when you're spinning the steering wheel to tell which one's up and which one's down so i'm going to epoxy this all the way up to the edge um all the way up to the edge she looks really good by the time i'm done with it and i paint it i'll, I'll go ahead and do a painter's tape so <clears throat> it look OEM and all the bumps should smooth out. I'll send it down. I just send the whole thing down too, so wait and see. I just send it, send all the services, surfaces so I can prime 
uh, take this off in a minute. But I must say, this looks really cool texture. It's almost like Iron Man suit. I like the texture. It looks amazing. Okay, let's try this. The 5000 RPM. Turn it on. Okay, I have a great idea. Beside the color, I'm thinking I want to put some texture behind it. So when I grab, I know which one it is, so I don't have to look at the, beside looking at the different color. So before I start to fill all this in, I'm thinking to, I found this spring, it's for my um, paintball gun. My paintball gun is already gone many, many years ago, but I still had a spring. So I'm going to do that, glue it on, so when I pull, when I feel that, hinge I know it's up and I'm going to do this and I found other stuff I have in the drawer this is for my fridge spinner so this when I grab on the other side I know it's a downshift I, I, when I feel the a bunch of knobs that's a that's a downshift pedal okay then we got to glue a bunch of little dots in it too okay quick update so I glue the dots in the back of this so when I feel the dots, it's downshift in the back of this. Uh, I actually create a perfect curve. And the cool part is, when I do need to pull, my finger, it's easy to tell this piece. So I use the flex super glue, went through, well, it's hard to see. I took the tape off and everything stayed the same, the shape. Okay, real quick, this is the wood filler I'm talking about. Uh, this one doesn't crack. And I've been using it on a lot of the experiments and models. Very cool. It dries within a few hours. Uh, mainly it's paintable and it doesn't crack. It will not crack or shrink. So this is a really good wood filler. Okay. And you can send it to. I have two epoxy resin, which is gonna. What I'm thinking I'm going to do is I'm going to mix this three together in a smaller batch and apply the regions I want one at a time. Okay, I'm going to attempt to make this with filler and the resin epoxy. Okay, so this end is almost dry. Um, I think it's time to do this side. I'm not going to use that much wood filler, but I am going to use a lot more raised resin. And this time, I'm going to use the hardener first. I should make a little hole. There we go. The hardener down evenly. Then the resin. This will guarantee the resin and the hardener will mix with each other. So it really looked like a 
frying tempura or like a dookie. Once it's all sanded down, it should look like a piece of wood. And nice and smooth. The resin and the wood filler. I overfilled here so I can do a better cut at the inside edge. edge. Hopefully, yeah, that should be okay. I think I can smooth that out a little bit. Curling under California's sun. Curing. Should get about 100 degrees today. Under the sun. Finally finished sending it. Next is painting it. So the question is, do I do clear coat or do I paint over it? It's kind of cool the way it looks. Very light. Take about 50% of weight off. First primer. Primer is on. First layer. Going to spray a primer on top. First primer. Well, after primer yesterday, uh, we see a, the actual shape of the previous sanding. So this morning I came in and took down another 30% of the blade. Now it look, looks like a piece of knife. Knife blade and looks really cool. All the kinks are out. Kinks from before disappeared. Sharp, smooth, one piece of metal all the way down. It's great to have a bell sander because I can control the flatness throughout the thing. Now I'm going to um, take it down from 60 grit to 150 and to 300 ready for paint. So after blast it down with 300 and 50, 20 grit, I can't remember if it was 320 or 350. I think I gotta leave it because I can see a little bit of, um, it's nearly polished, but you can still see a little bit of uh, scratch mark, brush mark, I like it, but it's so fine, it's almost like a, um, a matte finish, polish, this looks so nice. I think, I don't know, I should just clear coat it, or still do my paint. Looks very nice though. Piece of artwork. Finally, it's ready for paint. Real paint. Okay. Looking real good. So I think what I'm gonna do is I want to keep this as nice as right now. So it's clear coat for the top part. And the one that faces me, it's gonna be silver, chrome. So I'm going to spray some chrome in the back, but without damaging the front, I have to do the clear first. I got it backwards. I have to do silver first in the back. I mask off the front and do a light coat of silver, chrome, I guess. And then we'll do the clear. Oh, when it's all finished. Paint is insane. It's the best silver paint I've ever seen. The metal paint, it, it's instantly turned to metal. So, um, there's some filter I need to do. Didn't see that. I can feel those after this coat is dry. First, solid coat with a clear coat. Okay, I finally done spraying it. It looks amazing. So, the tip I have is uh, look how nice that look. Is I sprayed uh, the chrome first for about two coats of chrome. Then I sprayed the clear, the diamond clear, emerald. I spray it and about one coat, a very heavy coat, wait about five minutes. And while it's still tacky, I sprayed two more coats, a thick coat of this. So it's, it's one, uh, two coats of this, one coat of that, and two more coats of that. Because this will flake off. But because that's still tacky, so this will stick and they fill in a lot of holes and make it really nice and smooth almost mere chrome finish the 
of course, all the sanding you'll need to do. But if you just do the diamond clear over the chrome, the chrome become very hazy, almost like that, the hazy chrome. But if you see the top, it's super shiny. That's the chrome by itself. So I want a very shiny look. Um, so I end up with spraying a heavy coat of chrome on top of the clear while still tacky. But if I spray it after the, uh, the clear has totally dried, the chrome is going to flake off. So that should be really cool for pedal shifting. Again, this is just a $14, $15 chrome, which is amazing. And a clear about the same, about $15, $30. It's gonna do two different colors. I think the the back of the um, the different feel I should be able to identify. Plus, I'm gonna put some sticker on it, so the sticker will help. All right. I was going to put a sticker on it and then spray a, a layer of clear, but if one day I want to take the sticker off, the sticker will be under the clear, and it's no good. So I decided not to do that. Plus, stickers a uh, color fade. I'll leave this till tomorrow. Should be pretty good. Last look. So after many, many days of keep trying to do the chrome paint, the paint refused to dry. So I end up having to resend everything. And this is the final product. I took out all the texture stuff and replaced it with a sticker. It kind of looked like a space shadow part because I used a really hard edge uh, brush to remove all the paint and filled it in with a special filler. So it looks really, really cool. And the back side stickers. Assembly success. Right now just curing the back a little bit more. Send it down. The glow in the dark paste. I would say it's not really a paint, more of a paste. And we powder coat, I mean clear coat it. Looks fairly good. Almost like a tattoo. A little hazy feel able to install this in about half an hour. You can still tell the sticker in the back. Because the glow in the dark paint is in front of the sticker. So it's lighting the sticker up. Upshift is green, downshift is blue. Okay, finally, finished installed. I haven't plugged in the battery because I don't want to be here when I plug the battery back in. The airbag might blow, who knows? It looks pretty sweet. It's humongous. It's the same size as before uh, because it's a lot more skinnier from the sanding. The whole thing looks huge. It's another side profile. I send it down the sides and the thickness. So let me get out. Just to look at it, it's fairly, there's a big difference. Oh. All right. Uh, so if one day I want to restore back to the factory setting uh, each side of the, the module it's fifty dollars each so it's a hundred dollars I can even get a color ones for eighty dollars each um, but right now let's just stay with this for now I'm just gonna hit it UVI is the best for glow in the dark paint pavement It's gonna make it glow super good. Look at that. Holy crap. That's so cool. Upshift green, downshift blue. I would call this a success. So if I turn on the car. Still see it glowing. Screen turned on.
brightness off. Yeah, very cool. 